Ken Clark, it's a pleasure to, to be in your home. Thank you for having us. You held some big offices of state, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Home Secretary, Health Secretary. You had big jobs. But I think you got a relatively good press for a senior politician. I mean, no one really gets a good press as a, as a major politician, but you, you, people were kinder to you and liked you more than most. How did you do it? Well, I can't speak about any personal popularity I had, but at times I was hugely unpopular. Politics is a terribly roller coaster thing, and you have to take tough, difficult decisions, and the public are against changing anything or against ministers upsetting anybody. Uh, so I wound I, I was lucky. Usually it ends in tears. Uh, but I actually had a very successful last big job. It wasn't my last job in government. I was in the Cameron Clegg coalition government in, there, in his, that, that cabinet. Uh, but although the major government was in tatters and had been torn apart by Europeans and ridiculous civil warfare, uh, but, 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 but the, the economy... I got us out of a, the end of a recession, uh, the 1990s recession, and my, Norman, Norman had started a bit, a little bit, uh, but it was still it, we were still in a bad way when I took over, and I got I got growth, low inflation, the economy was doing well. Blair and Gordon Brown had to fight the election, saying they weren't going to change economic policy. Made a slogan that they would stick with my figures on tax and spending, uh, and I, I therefore came out of being chancellor very popular. Now you go back to when I was at the de at health department. Uh, there were times there where I was deeply unpopular. Uh, the, the battle with the BMA, with them launching all kinds of attacks on my reforms, which they tried to resist, um, very personalised attacks. The BMA was quite the nastiest and the least least you know really nasty union of all the many I had fights with. Uh, but the worst time was when I had a seven month ambulance strike. And we, we gave the country a much better ambulance service where the strike was effective by bringing in the army. But that was hugely unpopular with the public. And I, I, I really was deeply, deeply unpopular then. So uh, it was a bit of luck that I finished on a particularly high note. I mean, with hindsight, uh, no one ever made the slightest attempt to reverse my health reforms. And the Blair government, which was really was a, a mildly conservative government, and Tony was a great admirer of Thatcher and the Thatcher government, actually. Uh, they just carried on my health reforms. So, 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 so we were all over by then. Um, but yeah, I, I, I did manage to finish on a high note when I was Chancellor. We, we got used to about 3% growth and 2% inflation and living standards continued to rise into the 2000s for as long as they stuck with my policies. You stood to be Conservative leader three times. Yes, that's a record. Did each time hurt? I always say it's the only bad habit I've ever given up, standing for Conservative leader. How much did it hurt not being Conservative leader? Oh, it didn't hurt, funnily enough. Uh, I, 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 no, I wasn't... I didn't have recovery. I just, it just happened. I, I you know, I look, looking back, uh, I did, you know, I very much wanted... Uh, to, to, to be leader and really have the chance of being Prime Minister. And I think I was expected to be leader at some stage. Yeah. So I was surprised that I didn't win, particularly when we, we made this change and gave the paid up members the final say. And I'd won with the members of Parliament, but they voted for a chap called Ian Duncan Smith because they thought I was too pro-European. Uh, and that was, that, was, that was a bit of a blow. Uh, but I, no, I was not personally hurt by it. I just took it in my stride. I'd been in politics long enough by then to realise that, you know, it, 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 events do actually constantly take you by surprise. And I probably thought I might have another go sometime. I, my last go, you know, was after that. When, but I knew by then it was a bit of an adventure, but I, I stood against Cameron. Yeah. But I, that was the one I, where I did least well. I came, f I, I came third, I think, then. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've had a lot of um, 
Conservative Prime Ministers in in the last um, few months. Uh, we used not used to didn't used to change them quite so frequently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's um, a bad so habit. Th Maybe they should give up. It's a very very bad habit. You 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 can't achieve anything in any political office till you have at least about two years in it. If you are if you do have an agenda of your own and you want to change things for what you think is the better. The circus of politics for the last six years it, it has become farcical and the low depths of farce have been reached in you know, the last six months until Rishi took over. Yeah, Liz Truss, you say that, uh, Prime Minister, in these two years. Did you feel personally for, for Liz Truss? I feel personally sorry for her. Yes, I've never fallen out with her. She's a, I was amazed, absolutely amazed. I was quite surprised she got into the Cabinet. I was utterly amazed uh, that uh, she became Prime Minister. Uh, but then uh, I, I, I have never, ever voted for the person who won the leadership election. Me neither, in the a, Labour a, Party. Any, any time in my life, <laughs> until the last one. I, I did support Rishi. Right, uh, OK, uh, 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 OK. Um, and of course, Boris Johnson, he suspended uh, the whip, the Conservative whip, from you, a number of... Uh... Well, slightly by accident. He, <laughs> he was wanting to purge the party of the younger people who happened to have voted with me. He'd broken lots of three-line whips on Europe in the other direction. Uh, and I, 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 the 21, I can't remember what we're voting on now, but it was, <laughs> in, in, that, it was in that dreadful Brexit <laughs> yeah. crisis, which was very yeah. bad for the country. Uh, and he, of all people, suddenly decided and one of the three line whips to take the whip away from everybody. His targets were Amber Rudd and David Liddington and who, the people who were going to be the future leadership of the party, his rivals. So he got me slightly by accident, because uh, needless to say, I was voting with them and whatever it was, uh, but nobody bothered. Chief Whip, then and now, the then Chief Whip, it's still a friend of mine, and I know him perfectly well. He never told me he was taking the whip away. No one ever wrote to me. I read in the newspapers I'd lost the whip, carried on as before. He offered me a peerage when I retired. I was retiring already, so it didn't make any difference to me. I'd announced my retirement at the next election. I stood down, was offered a peerage. And everybody assumed I'd take the Conservative whip in the House of Lords, which I do now. I'm a lifelong mainstream Tory. It was just a minor incident in my political career. And yes, and as you say, you're in the Lords now. Uh, this week, Keir Starmer has said, if he wins, the Lords will go. Would you vote to abolish yourself? Oh, yes. I've always... I've always it's, 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 it's a ludicrous, inaccurate institution. Particularly given our politics has now become populist and polarised, our Western democracy, you know, seriously, it, it's not working properly, neither is the, most of the Western democracies in the present angry mood of protest uh, and populism uh, swept America's worse than we are. Uh, and you need a strong elected upper house, a Senate. I quite like going and pottering around the House of Lords, but it's a bizarre anachronism. I don't, my friends find it difficult to get me persuaded to take it very seriously. And certainly, if you get prime ministers like Boris Johnson, you know, took the slightest notice of, he didn't take, doesn't take much notice of the Commons. Uh, and we do need stronger parliamentary institutions. So the idea of abolishing uh, the House of Lords uh, and replacing it with an elected institution with proper parliamentary powers, not a weak one. I'm entirely in favour of that, have been throughout my entire political career. Quite a few Conservatives are. Now, I've read your, um, your, your memoir, your autobiography, um, A Kind of, kind of Blue, and like, there's lots of interesting political stuff, but there was, there was one uh, personal anecdote about... Well, I'll read it out. In your memoir, you wrote, I've been drinking ever since I was at school and I've not had a day without a drink since. Is that still the case? That's probably true, yes. Um, I probably drink less now uh, than I used to. I mean, I to drink less than I did when I was a teenager. Uh, but I'm not leaving that aside. Uh, uh, I didn't drink more than the normal teenager. I've never had a drink problem. No, no. Like that. No, no, no. no, but you like a drink. Uh, but you know, the whip's office I was in, which was my first government job, uh, that was pretty hard drinking uh, in the Parliament. 
Parliament 50 years ago was a more hard-drinking institution than it is now. Um, uh, so, so uh, but I, socially, I, uh, I, I, I drink. Uh, 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 now, as I get older, less, less, far less beer than I used to. But I, I'm afraid I, still before going to bed at night, and I now go to bed very late at night, because uh, uh, I, in my uh, old age, um, no, it's a late night whiskey or a late night brandy with a Havana cigar before I finally go to bed. I try to make the time I go to bed and my hours of living in tune with the rest of the human race, but I find I go to bed later and get up later as I, even getting into my 80s now, I, my, my, my lifestyle is changing. But it includes certainly a, a good stiff whiskey or a good stiff brandy as a nightcap. A red wine when I'm eating, but I only have one meal a day. Oh. And uh, you know, a couple of glasses of wine. <laughs> a good meal? I have one good meal, and then I eat fruit or something for the rest of the day. But by, I, I, I mean, you know, I was a butterball when I was Chancellor of the Exchequer. Everybody was in those days. Nigel Lawson and Norman Lamont got as fat as I did when I, uh, I followed them. Uh, I'm, I'm a shadow of the man <laughs> I was. And that's just the fact one loses appetite as you get older, and I... I have one good sound meal a day, and that, that, that's it, really. And I find I don't feel hungry otherwise. You lose your wife for 51 years, Gillian, mm -hmm. in 2015. Seven years ago, yes. Are you, uh, does one continue to go along a grieving process? Well, no, I don't. I won't, I won't claim that. I, I, of course, I grieve. To be reminded of it, which I, of course, I remind myself frequently. I haven't forgotten it or anything like that. That would be extraordinary. No, it was, that was a terrible blow. Never crossed my mind that I would outlive her. I assumed she'd outlive me. She, you know, her life was less mad than mine, although she... she was a huge, huge importance to my way of life, and, and gave me a, a real, a real family life, and kept me, kept me sane and, and, and normal, and in the middle of all the extraordinary things we we were in the middle of because of my job, and uh, and she handled the, well, the appalling problem of being a politician's wife. Uh, with just she just did 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 it. She got you know. I stopped making jokes about her being a one-parent family, bringing up my children, because she was. They saw me at the weekend when they were lucky, at the height of my career, uh, and I used to insist on taking the whole of August trying to vanish somewhere in Europe, uh, to actually spend a month living with my family. And, and you know, just being a, an ordinary family man, I always got called back in crises. But anyway, I won't go on about it. But you know, she 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 kept me a human being, and she gave me normality in my life. And she she it was terribly terrible misfortune. So she was unlucky to have the illness, and then she died. Well, nowadays wouldn't have been when we were children, but. But nowadays, to die in your mid-70s is unlucky, certainly, particularly for a woman. And here we are, seven years later, uh, I, I, I remember her gratitude as well as, above all, with great affection. We, we made our golden wedding. We got 50 years in. It's a lovely note to end on. Ken Clark, mm. thank you for uh, reflecting on a massive uh, political career. It's a pleasure to be in the company of such a giant of politics. Thank you. We haven't been very political. <laughs> <laughs>